allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, uh, I introduce you, a good friend of mine for well over 20 some odd years. Uh, I've known him since the old Surgery Republican Club days where he used to pop by and say hello. And uh, that was during the old Robert DiCarlo days when he was state senator. And uh, so without further ado, my good friend, Jerry Kassar. And Marty Golden is chief of staff. And like I, I really thank Glenn. I mean, Glenn is a very, very old friend of mine. We've run him for office a number of times. We uh, I've always found him to be somebody who actually cares about what he's doing. And uh, you know, and, and in politics in Brooklyn, that's not always the case. And he's obviously still cares. So um, I hope you do win the borough presidency race. I mean, we'd be glad to endorse you. Thank you. I mean, I think that one of the problems with the Brooklyn borough presidency race over the years is that. People just, we've never really been able to find somebody who's interested in saying things. Saying things. And I mean, you you got a lot to say. And in politics, you want candidates who got a lot to say. Fran is here. She is uh, the district manager, the Brooklyn director for Congressman Donovan and my vice chairperson. William is here, who's running for city council and used to be one of my party officers in Brooklyn uh, until he entered into this race where he is a, uh, you know, taking a different view on how to proceed. I don't want to have a lot to say. I want to have more of a discussion. But the Conservative Party, um, you might say the Conservative Party wants to be the Tea Party's uh, physical presence on the ballot. I mean, we, um, we exist on a lot of issues that are very similar to yours. But you don't have ballot access. And actually, from a technical perspective, if you were, if you were actually one of the registered clubs with the National Tea Party Movement, you could not endorse because of the, the, uh, the not-for-profit status. So most Tea Party groups do not endorse. I know you've had a more uh, fortunate for me, anyways, a more liberal way of looking at that and have participated a little more in the process than a lot of the other Tea Party organizations. And frankly, you're one of the last surviving ones in the city. I remember seven or eight years ago attending so many Tea Party type events in the city of New York. Um, Bob Turner <coughs> was partially elected due to the Tea Party on the Conservative Party. Um, I just don't see as much of that anymore. That's really unfortunate. It's very unfortunate for all of us. Donald Trump is going to give us an opportunity. Uh, might be sometimes a little rough, but it's going to give us an opportunity to um, do a lot more, particularly on some of the uh, dollar and cents issues, which you, you all are about and which I'm about, uh, as well as you know some of the other issues, uh, you know some of the education issues, crime issues, some of the other social issues. But dollars and cents issues, putting a dollar in my pocket and keeping it there so I can do what I want with it. You're about that, the president's about that, the conservative party's about that. So we have a lot, uh, you know, a lot that we can work uh, together on. Um, I'm gonna say most of the state, let's face it, most of the state outside of me, this is a, this is a something, you in particular, I can tell you know a lot what's going on. So you, when I say this, you're gonna know what, what I'm saying makes this true. The state is not really all that democratic. No. It's the city that's incredibly democratic, and the suburbs are mixed. Locally, the governments are Republican for the most part. Uh, they basically are. Um, and it's, it's shown, I mean, Astorino won something like 45 out of 62 counties. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you don't win a gubernatorial election based on the territory you accumulate, it's the votes. And although, and Rob did very well, and I think he showed that there was a, a roadway to victory in this state, but we we have a lot we have a lot more to do, and it mostly involves the city. Um, if we can get in the city 30, 32, 33 percent on a statewide election against like a Mario, an Andrew Cuomo, I should say, um, we can win the election. Uh, how far was Rob from that? He was actually pretty far. What was the? I, be, I mean, I believe in the city of New York, got like 19 or 20 or 21 percent. He was about 10 points down on that, 10 or 11 points really, but he didn't ever have the money to contest in the city. The best thing he had going for him was the fact that as the Westchester County Executive, he was in the city media market. It gave him a certain amount of ID, particularly in the Bronx, but let's face it, if you live in the city, how much time do you really spend focusing in on News Radio 88 story on the Westchester County Executive? You just don't do it. So he had a, he has a way, if he enters the race again, or if Wilson enters the race again, 
or if uh, Mark Molinero, the Dutchess County executive, enters the race and they're all looking at it, all of them are gonna have to spend more time in the city. They probably should get a lieutenant gubernatorial candidate that is from Staten Island or from the city, a Republican elected official from the city. They probably uh, should figure they gotta spend more money in the city. They gotta have to spend more time in the city. I mean, in the reverse is Cuomo knows he lost all those counties upstate. And as you probably see, he puts a lot of your taxpayer money upstate. And the irony is these upstate communities are always complaining that about New York City is like being like a drag on them. We aren't a drag on them. The governor takes our tax dollars and puts them in western New York. He does it with gigantic numbers. And that's how he works to buy their votes. And he still fails at it. So, I mean, let me just, let me just get away from that for a second um, and say to you that um, I do think there are bright spots in the city. I think you guys are one of the bright spots. I mean, I don't, what's the deal on these Tea Party groups? You got, are there Tea Party groups in the other counties? I don't really read that. Yes, there are. What do you got? Where, 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 where are you here? Uh, Westchester. No, the city. What, you got, what else you got in the city? Oh, I thought you were elsewhere outside, New York City. No, I'm not um, in the city. No, um, you're right. Tea Party presence in New York City is coming down. Yeah, I mean, and that's like, uh, you know, that's, you, that's why you were so helpful. <laughs> but, but, I mean, we could use a whole bunch of tea parties. We could use them in conjunction with the uh, conservative party. So, I mean, basically, um, you know, I want to tell you this, though. I do, I do see some po well, a couple of real positive changes. Don't, don't for a moment think that this change in the Brooklyn Republican Party isn't a big deal. Teddy Gora and the way they've begun to organize is a big deal. They actually are going to be, they've started doing stuff, they've got a lot of stuff planned, and they're interested in contesting and participating, and they're, they're developing. And, they, and what's happening is, Agora is allowing this, their executive committee to begin to coalesce. I think you probably know this story. Four years ago, uh, uh, four years ago, um, Eaton essentially unilaterally endorsed Casamitidis without consulting with the party's committee, which is what got Marty Golden so insane against him. And, you know, Marty ended up going with Loda. A lot of members of that committee went with Loda. But, John, uh, uh, you know, Craig went directly with Casamitidis. That's never going to happen again. This new chairman, uh, who I consider a good friend, is very interested in causing a participatory Republican Party in Kings County. <coughs> I'm sure he's going to provide leadership. You know, he's a partner, um, and without belittling, he's a partner in uh, Nixon Peabody, a major firm, um, extremely active in the Bay Ridge Diker Heights community, extremely active. He has very serious leadership ability, and he has an interest in doing stuff. And I've already, you're on his executive committee. Yes, I'm um, sergeant at arms. So he's, he's, and also a district leader. Right, so I mean, uh, who else here is on this committee? Anyone else here on his committee? No, but he is, um, you, you should have him in too, by the way. I was trying to get but you should have one less person to be here, and you got to look that up. Right. But uh, what's it called? Um, he's very, he's a very, very good chairman. I also want you to know this. Um, even though I don't really always agree with her, and I, I know he, I know Glenn doesn't agree with her all the time. Republican Party in the city of Manhattan, with the Del Malpass, who is a such a, a, a refreshing improvement from the last chairman, who probably should be in jail. Um, he, um, she is, um, she is. She is also doing a lot. Uh, she's got active clubs. They run, every time they run a race in the specials, they get busy with the races. And eventually, they're going to break through. And even though I don't agree with them on a lot of stuff, it's still better for us to have a, a Republican Party in Manhattan that's active uh, for obvious reasons. And the Bronx, too. The Bronx has a new channel. And the Bronx, the Bronx since, their, since Savino went to prison when, a, couple of, a couple of chairmen ago, has, has developed into a nicely active organization. So, and Queens always had potential, right? You guys know Bob Turner. He's, he's got, they've always had potential. They've had their internal battles. But, I mean, I think they have a, they're beginning to come back, too. Staten Island has always been strong. I, I mean, what they do over there, which you don't really see much in the city, certainly, they actually line their people up. People move from one spot to another spot. They bring people in. They're like a traditional Republican Party organization, or political organization, I should say, that always had, you know, things don't happen accidentally there. This person's going to be that, in that spot or whatever, and, and it always lines up. Now, some people say, well, that sounds like it chokes things. But you know what? If it results in you continuing to hold the offices for decades upon decades, are you going to really complain about the success? 
We know what they're about. We know what they stand for. And I think we'd all be happy if you know some of those people, like Donovan or Nicole, represented even a bigger chunk of Brooklyn. You know, they represent small chunk. Well, Donovan's got a pretty decent chunk, but Nicole's got a small piece. So you know, I think we'd all say if we could get more of them in, that'd be fine. Now, the Conservative Party. Um, the truth of the matter is, the Conservative Party in Brooklyn is. And I think this is going to end now because of Gora. But if you were to look at the last couple of election cycles and combine it all, you'd see that the Conservative Party in Brooklyn has probably run five times the number of candidates as the Republican Party. Yeah. In fact, many times we were running Republicans that we couldn't get the Republican Party to endorse. <laughs> and even more times we were running Republicans that they couldn't file the petitions because no one went out and got the signatures. Yeah. It was a disgrace. It was a almost, um, oh, what would I say? It was almost political malpractice. Uh, Malka. Malka. Well, is a recent example, but, but you could go, but I would say last year more good things happened than didn't happen. Right. If you go back a little further, you'd see that, and, and many of you, I mean, you all vote, I'm sure many times you went into the machine, the, 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 and, or, or sort of ballot, and you say to yourself, but I'm not voting for the Democrat, the only one left is the conservative. Like, you know, for judges, not that it's, that's always no. a big deal here, but certainly for Senate and Assembly, and so forth and so on. We have we have a we have a small, relatively small committee. I think my executive committee is 22 or 23 people. Cartrell's on. We just walked in. Um, obviously, the other two here, like Fran and I was saying Liam. And then we have you know an X amount of additional people that are active. We have a club. Christine Sisto runs the club that does meet regularly. I think they have Betterman. You got the, you got, they got uh, better speaking next month, speak right? Speak. Yep. If they don't tell me what's going on, I feel like something's happening. I feel better about that. Will Betterman? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you won't, because we get them. Well, I'm telling you. Later on, we'll, we'll no, let we them circulate. Circulate. Yeah, after we end. That's true. Uh, right. so, um, but, but, but here's the thing. Um, we are, we've, been, we've been okay in terms of going out and getting the signatures. We don't, we don't need to get a lot of signatures. But I mean, to be honest with you, if you got to go and get 10 signatures and they live 15 blocks apart, it exactly it takes a little bit of an effort. But we've been pretty good. We've been pretty much running candidates everywhere in Brooklyn. Uh, pretty much. It hasn't been a perfect scenario. I've been able to keep that going. Been able to raise some money. Been able to push some issues. Um, Conservative Party has been involved in a... We were involved with you with the bad tax. We've been involved against the sanctuary cities. Uh, we regularly um, you know, criticize the mayor and bevery of topics, you should really hardly run out of topics. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been, we pretty, you know, the governor has a good um, shtick. He makes you think he's lowering taxes. But in reality, he's got a lot of hidden fees and taxes, and this year's budget's a couple hundred million. I mean, we like to be a group that points them out. I have a newspaper column. I've had a newspaper column for, I don't know, uh, 1988. Yeah, that's right. What common sense. Right, I've had a column since 1988, uh, and, um, Never missed actually a weekly. I never missed uh, a, a piece. And what we ended up doing is, I've used that as an opportunity to express some of these issues on behalf of the party. And then we, the party in Brooklyn has a very active. You have a. I mean, honestly, you are more active than us, but we're pretty good. Um, we have an active Facebook uh, operation, a like page, and we have a pretty active uh, Twitter presence. We have a blog. Um, so I try to use the social media. Um, I, I don't actually directly input on what's going on. A guy named Ross Brady takes care of it for us, my, one of our officials, an attorney with the party. But um, we've used that to, you know, it's like you said, it's not the old days where I do a press release or stand on a corner. I got the column, which also ends up on a, a bunch of sites because of the newspaper and it's probably got about 30,000 readers. I, I possibly, you know, you know, I might, that's what I think. Uh, the, uh, and then we got the blog, and like I said, and all this stuff. So basically, each week we're able to get out there with something, and we've had a lot of opportunities. I'm going to probably use the site to thank you for what you did on the flag. I was looking at that the other day, because I thought that was, you know, actually, that's kind of a big deal. Right. I mean, too many people don't think that's a big deal. So I thought that was a pretty big deal, so I'm going to want to do something on that. Um, so, I mean, that's a little bit of what we're up to. Let me just see something else here. Um, So, um, oh, you know what else, just as a keep in the back of your minds, um, that proposal for non-citizen voting in the city of New York, not illegal alien voting, that cannot be happened, but the city of New York has the ability to institute non-citizen voting for municipal elections. 
Do not assume for a moment that's dead. My view is that is the last big thing that the lunatic council president is, uh, council president is looking to have happen before she goes out of office. You mean like people living outside of the city? No, 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 no. Um, uh, this is what it is. If you're not, if you're a resident alien, you cannot vote in the New York City municipal elections. This would allow that. Resident aliens. Green card holders. The New York City not resident. illegal aliens. Legal aliens, which are many thousands in New York but they're City. Not, they're not U.S. They're citizens. Not citizens. Right, correct. So they can vote. Well, they can't yet, but the city has the legal authority to allow that, and there's proposals, and that's one of her big proposals. Okay. That is something we should all watch out for. Because they, you know, they get, that's one of those things, they get under the, the nose under the tent, and we got problems. We got bigger problems than we got. I mean, which you and I are, you and I are trying to scratch our way into some of these elections, you do that, and we ain't scratching our way in. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna be buried. So well, well, let me just. You mean Letitia yeah, James, right? Yeah. What? Letitia James, or? No, no. I, I've said the city of New York, the city council has proposals for non-citizen voting. It is totally legal to do it in a municipality. Several plates in the state already have it. About some of the the, the president, you talking Letitia James or the speaker? No, the speaker, the speaker, the speaker. I said, I said. President, I meant you're right. I meant speaker. Well, why is it legal to do that for, for any municipality? Because I mean, here's the deal. So here's the deal. I'm not a lawyer. I just know that this has been checked out, and they and it exists all over the country. There are hundreds of municipalities that do it. We did it for school board elections, which were different, because the school board we all felt that school board elections it was okay because the parent, the kids are. But it is a municipality can set its own standard. They cannot, however go beyond their, their local voting. So the city of New York cannot declare it legal for non-citizens to vote in state assembly or state senate races. They can only do it for city elections. But you realize, of course, you're, you're well aware, that gets their foot in the door. I'm opposed to it. foot in the door. I came here to upset you. Have I upset you? Yes. 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 Creeping me uh, yes. I, I did not know it. To be, the the proposal, the but, proposal but, has uh, been there I'll for a while. There's several bills. The proposal has been there for a while. It has actually been pushed back by the mayor of all because he feels it goes too far. But and also there's one of the there's one Democratic councilman that goes crazy about it. And it's, believe it or not, and I don't agree with him on a lot of stuff. But Greenfield, who's a major player in the city council, has been able to push that one back. David Greenfield, and obviously the uh, three Republicans suppose it. But um, but we got to. We have to make that an issue for this year's city council elections. We've got to make sure people are on record are saying no to that. We've got to make sure that they are saying no to the best of our ability on sanctuary cities. We've got to make sure that when the bag tax moratorium is lifted and there's a new proposal that comes up next year, that it's something that we can, you know, live with. I mean, there's no bag tax. But, you know, a little more recycling can be the end of the world. Um, or, or a benefit to recycling, whatever. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening. A lot of bad stuff happening, and uh, you know it's like that dam out west. It breaks, we're going to drown. It has. We haven't drowned yet, but we're close. <laughs> so um, you know, I think we're all allied. <laughs> I think we're all allied, and um, you know, you know, if you listen to me, you'd probably say, "How does he sleep at night?" Well, I do. I do because basically, I believe in the individual. I believe that the individuals as a conglomerate actually support more of what we think about than not. Am I going to call it the silent majority? I mean, I'm not that Nixon S, so probably not going to do it that way. But there are a lot of people that agree with us, more people than, necess than necessarily vote. I mean, if you look at how Trump did in the city, there were parts of the city he did astronomically well. So we can't say that there aren't these well, gigantic also, pockets. What's the area? Also, right the fact that, that uh, hey, Marty Gold, he won Marty Gold in Tennessee. Wasn't the turnout in the last city of uh, mayoral election 22%? Yes, well. Yeah, so in the general, but I mean, whose fault is that besides a lot of the people who gave up? But, um, but, you know, I don't know Lotus fall, Lotus try. I mean, you know. Uh, but that means a lot of people out there that we could reach. Yeah, I think, we, I, think you, we, I think it's true. I think it's true. You're not giving the message out that great with Facebook, for instance. That's how I found out about this. When I found out about it, I remembered. But I said, oh, I have something else to do. Then that canceled, so I said, let me go to this. I called, the first of all, I look on Facebook to make sure it's still happening. Can't find it. I'm trying to get to people, nobody knows. What are you looking under? Well, I started jumping around. Brooklyn Tea Party. And you, you, put, you put Brooklyn Tea Party on Facebook? And yes. It's, it's, it's not there. Period. Well, right? Brooklyn Tea Party was there, but the, uh, but the piece... Yeah, I saw it. It came up again. 
But I mean, it was a point where he's back up. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's hard to find. I pulled the this uh, the library twice.